This is the story of the very worried sparrow. There was once a very worried sparrow. All the other birds looked up at the bright blue sky and sang for joy. But the very worried sparrow hung his head and shut his beak tight. He did look unhappy. He had always worried, even when he was just a baby bird in the nest. His brothers and sisters kept saying, cheep, cheep, cheer up. But the very worried sparrow only said, meep, meep. Oh dear. When he began to grow, the first thing he thought about was food. Oh dear, oh dear, he thought, I'm so hungry. Whatever am I going to eat? His brothers and sisters did not seem to worry at all. They just sat up and sat in the nest looking up at the tree in the bright blue sky. It's because they don't think, he said to himself. Suddenly there was a whir of wings and his mother was back with four fat, juicy caterpillars in her beak. Cheep, 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 went all the baby birds and she popped a caterpillar into each mouth. Very soon all the baby birds were quite fat and their feathers had become, begun to grow. They tried to stand on the edge of the nest without wobbling. They stretched their wings and flapped them up and down. One day Father Bird said, I think it is time you all learn to fly. Cheep, cheep, hooray, said the little birds, all except the very worried sparrow. He said, meep, meep, oh dear, and looked more worried than ever. The sparrows hopped out of the nest onto a big branch. They sat in a line, bravely flapping their wings. Father and mother bird flew to a nearby fence and called to them. One by one, the sparrows set off. This is lovely, they called. The very worried sparrow hopped from one foot to the other. I'll never do it, he cheeped to himself. Oh dear. He was so frightened he lost his balance and toppled off the branch. He gulped, opened his little wings wide, and flew. There, said his mother as he landed beside her, you can do it too. As the spring days turned into warm summer, the little birds grew and grew. They learned to find caterpillars among the green leaves. Snip, snap went their busy beaks. They searched for seeds and berries on the brown earth. Best of all, they learned to sing. The world was filled with happy chirping. All except the very worried sparrow. He was not as brave as the others. It's such a big place out there, he thought. I might get lost away from our nest. Meep, meep, oh dear. And he looked more unhappy than ever. At dusk, when they were settling down for the night, Father Sparrow gathered them all together, warm and snug in the nest. He began to tell them wonderful stories of long ago and far away, of the great father who made the world and everything in it, of how the day begins and where the wind comes from, and all the little things that every creature knows. The young birds listened with bright eyes, all except the very worried sparrow. He was too worried to listen and too afraid. He peered out into the darkness until very slowly his eyes closed and he fell asleep. By midsummer, the very worried sparrow felt a bit braver. He set off from home, flying here and there, looking for food and worrying about where to find it. The open fields looked a good place. The early corn had just been cut and golden grains lay among the stubble. Suddenly, a shadow rushed across the ground. The little sparrow felt his heart go bump. Above him hovered the terrible sparrow hawk. His heart beat so fast he was too frightened even to worry. He crouched down small and still and waited. There was a rush of wings in the air and the, the sparrow hawk struck. When the sparrow opened his eyes, he saw the hawk flying up and away from him. He held a small field mouse in his great claw. Oh dear, breathed the very worried sparrow, feeling quite weak. Oh dear, oh dear. As soon as he felt better, he flew home as fast as his wings would carry him. After that, the little sparrow looked more worried than ever. 
The autumn winds blew and the trees shed their leaves. Oh dear, thought the very worried sparrow, it's getting colder and colder. How shall I keep warm? At night the frost came and then the snow fell, covering the ground in the thick, soft layer of sparkling white. The water on the bird tables in the gardens turned to ice. Puddles and ponds froze solid. Oh dear, thought the very worried sparrow, how am I going to find food to eat and water to drink? But he did. There was one little pond so sheltered that it didn't freeze. Every day the sparrow joined the other birds drinking at the pond. He had to look hard, but he could still find seeds on the bare earth and berries on the hedges. Later on, the children in the nearby house began to scatter bread each morning on the snow-covered grass in the garden. The waiting sparrows swooped down in a rush and chirped and quarreled over it. Spring came at last and the snow melted away into the grass. The sun shone through the water dripping from twigs and roofs and made them sparkle. The sparrows got very excited. It will soon be nesting time, they said, and began to look around for partners. The girl sparrows giggled and whispered on the branches while the boy sparrows flew and swooped and sang just to show off. Soon there were pairs of birds everywhere searching for a good safe place to build their nests. Oh dear, thought the very worried sparrow, now what shall I do? No one will want me for a mate. Sadly, he flew off by himself. He settled in a small apple tree at the far end of the garden, but he found there was someone there already. It was another little sparrow and she looked very shy. Cheep, she said in a small voice. Meep, meep, said the very worried sparrow, but he felt more hopeful. Will you be my mate? He asked all in a rush. Oh yes, said the shy little sparrow and she smiled at him. At first the sparrow and his mate were very happy. They flew around the garden together as the spring sun grew warmer and warmer. But after a while, the very worried sparrow started to worry again. Where shall we build our nest, he thought. The others have taken the best places. I'll never find somewhere quiet and safe. The shy little sparrow flew back to the small apple tree at the far end of the garden. Look, she chirped, no one has started to build here yet, and it's very quiet and safe. So it is, said the very worried sparrow and he looked a bit happier. We must begin to build at once. The apple blossoms fell and new green leaves hid the nest from sight. Before long, the shy little sparrow was sitting on the nest looking very proud. Under her warm feathers were four beautiful eggs. Her mate was flying backwards and forwards, feeding her with tasty tidbits. He should have been happy, but instead he was looking very, very worried. Meep, meep, oh dear, he chirped. I hope my eggs are safe. A cat might come, or a hawk. The tree might fall, and how shall I feed the babies? Roo, goo, what's the matter? asked a gentle voice. It was a turtle dove, with soft feathers and a very kindly look in her eyes. I've never seen a sparrow look so worried before. Well, said the sparrow, sighing, there are such a lot of things to worry about and a big tear rolled down his beak and splashed on his claw. Ooh, coo, called the dove gently. Don't you know about the great father who made us all? Haven't you been listening to the stories of long ago and far away? Well, no, sniffed the sparrow. I was too worried to listen. Do tell me now. The great father made us, cooed the dove. He made us and he knows all about us. He looks after us and gives us all we need. He even knows when our time has come to leave the earth. <coughs> oh, chirped the sparrow and his eyes were round with surprise. I didn't know that. When you were a baby bird, didn't you always have food? Asked the dove. Why, yes, said the sparrow. And when you learned to fly, you didn't get hurt. No, I didn't, said the sparrow, thinking back. What about the sparrow hawk? The dove cooed gently. Your time had not yet come, had it? I suppose not, said the sparrow. And your food and water, your mate and your nest, and those beautiful eggs, they all came in good time, didn't they? 
Yes, yes, they did, chirped the sparrow, beginning to look much happier. Will you come home with me, please, he said to the dove. Come and tell us more. I promise I will listen this time. And so the dove flew to the little apple tree at the bottom of the garden and perched on the branch next to the nest. As the sun set slowly over the hill and all the birds were settling for sleep, the dove told the sparrows the stories of long ago and far away, of the great father who made the world and everything in it, of how the day begins and where the wind comes from and all the little things that every creature knows. She spoke of the seasons and the years, of how things grow and new life comes. She told how the great father knows each creature and its time on the earth. Next day, when the sun rose, everything looked sparkling new in the morning light. The flowers opened their faces to the sun, and all the birds were singing. There was a little noise from the nest. Tock, 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 went one of the eggs. Tock, tock, tock. It's one of our babies, cried the shy little sparrow excitedly. Today is the day they will hatch. Then the very worried sparrow smiled. He looked just as happy as his mate. I can't wait to see them, he said. We can feed them and watch them grow and teach them to fly. There are so many things to do, and I want to tell them about the great father who made the world and everything in it, and who knows each sparrow. Then they won't have to worry for a single day. And he flapped his wings and sang for joy with all the other birds. Cheep, 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 he sang. Cheep, cheep, cheep loud enough to burst with happiness. The end.